Hello, in today's Live Online Studio class session, I will walk you through the process of creating a presentation rendering from a CAD file. I will be demonstrating the process of formatting the CAD line drawings to be used in a different vector object-based program like Adobe Illustrator. Therefore, the objective of this presentation is to demonstrate a step-by-step -step approach to creating a monochromatic colorized presentation with furniture and flyout annotation, such as the one seen here. In this example, you can see the dramatic impact colorization plays on the CAD line work drawings. The reason this is a good type of presentation is that CAD drawings are a requirement for most construction projects required by municipalities for permits. If you have the CAD drawings, then you can quickly render them in programs such as Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. This is a great workflow option to maintain billable client hours. Today we're going to be taking an AutoCAD drawing and altering it so that we can use the, the basic outline, the bones of this drawing, to put into Adobe Illustrator and render for the purposes of presentation. Okay, so the, the, this is a whole different set, although it's parallel and in its type, but it is a different type of drawing with a different focus. So the focus is communicating to your client about simple things like the color story or the color scheme, if you if you prefer that term, um, the placement of furniture, and and in some cases the placement of electrical and lighting as well. And the scope of that is really up to you in a presentation drawing. So I'm going to show you how to take a fully developed AutoCAD project and create a parallel presentation drawing. So I've used Ashley Tabor's drawing. Thank you so much, Ashley. And you can see that the bottom row is part of her construction documentation. She's made a copy of each of these elevations for the top row that you see here. And she's begun to eliminate some of the extraneous information that wouldn't be all that relevant to a client looking at a beautiful colorized presentation of their floor plan and elevations. This, this could be something that you actually use in a model format as well, either a rip and tear model that's rendered or a flip up model, which is rendered. Okay, so to get started, there are a couple of things that I wanna draw your attention to. Handout that's on in the modules, it's called CAD to Adobe Illustrator Instructions. It's a rather lengthy PDF file. You don't necessarily need to print it out, but the page that I think might be handy for you to print out is page two, which shows you an overview of the Adobe Illustrator tools, and page three, which um, narrows down the tools that you'll use for this assignment, as well as the keyboard commands on a PC or a Mac, which are different. In some ways they're different. They're control and then some keyboard combination, whereas they're a command on a Mac. So I what I intend to do in this lesson is walk you through the steps of creating PDF files that are to scale that we can import into, into Adobe Illustrator um, from AutoCAD. In this um, on this sheet, we have the title block information, and we also have um, some electrical information and some dimensions. And we want to eliminate the, the text because we're we're not going to um, we're not going to need that for the presentation drawing. In fact, it will get in the way. So. Um, the way that we're going to do this, and we'll start with the floor plan tab, is to hover your mouse over the tab at the bottom, as you see I'm doing here, and right mouse click, or if you're on a Mac, pick and, and hold the control button down. You'll get this mini menu, and what we want to choose from the selection is duplicate, 
and we're going to just drag all of our presentation drawings to the right. I'm going to pick on the tab, hold it, and drag it. That way I have my, um, my tabs also organized. And I'm going to hover over the new duplicated tab I just created, and I'm going to right mouse click again, or hold the control key and pick on a, on a Mac. And I'll rename this to FP Presentation. And that's just going to stand for Floor Plan Presentation and Enter. Now I'm going to make that the current tab that I'm on, and I will begin erasing the extraneous information that's just on the sheet. I'm not going to erase anything that's in the model. So, and the difference between the model and the paper is um, anything that's in this viewport is a window into our model where we've created the actual drawing. So we don't need this title block and we don't need the schedules or the legend. So I'm just going to highlight them and then hit the delete key on my keyboard. Now I'm down to the information that I really need for this, for this um, presentation of the floor plan. What comes into play next is the relationship of the viewport data to the layer property manager. So to get this, you, you should already know that the command is LA enter on the keyboard. But if you don't, just a refresher. You're going to need to have both of these things up so you can watch which layers you affect inside the viewport. Okay, so this sheet is going to have much different information than the construction floor plan sheet. Go back over here to the floor plan presentation. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is um, is just the, the columns that are on the top of your screen. If you want to see all the columns on your screen and you're on a Mac, which they kind of hide from you if you don't need them, they, they try to make everything look really, really clean on a Mac. But in the lower right hand corner is a little pull down menu, which if you hover over the top of it says display settings. And then if you pick from that and go to view options from that mini menu, you should have everything checked. You need to be able to use all of these options to be fully functional in AutoCAD. Okay, so then from here, um, you're going to have to familiarize yourself with what each of these little icons means. So um, on a Mac, if you look to um, this column, it has a little eye like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator have. And when that eye is, when that eye is um, on, the little circle here will be filled. And when an object's layer is not visible, it will be turned off. All right. That means it will be turned off in the entire drawing in all viewports. Now there is a way that you can keep everything on in, in model space and only organize information in your viewports according to what you want to show or print. So again, I would always, short way of saying this is, always keep all of your layers on in model space. At the end of the day, make sure everything's turned on and everything is unfrozen. But in your viewports, make sure you only have the information showing the product that's re relevant to the purpose of that sheet. Um, if you keep moving across here, you're going to see line weight for the entire drawing, line type for the entire drawing, transparency for the entire drawing, um, and then plotting, whether a layer can be plotted or not for the entire drawing, um, the color assignment here. Then beyond color assignment, you start to get into only the specialty viewport commands for the layers. So new VP freeze, um, 
or VP freeze. These are two different things. Since I already have all of these viewports pre-created for you, we're going to be working in this column that just says viewport freeze. New viewport freeze is an assignment that you can um, pre-create and then replicate anytime you create a new viewport. But since ours are already created, we're going to have to go in from um, individually to each viewport and set what we want the standards to be. So this is very good practice for you. Now, in order for whatever you do in your viewports over here to affect what happens here, this viewport has to be activated. To activate it, you're going to double click inside this viewport window line. Once you've activated it, the window viewport line is a much heavier line. That shows you that it has gone live. Anything we do in the layers will show up over here in our viewport. So the first thing I'm going to do is freeze the text. We don't want those in our presentation drawing, just in the construction drawing. We want to freeze this text in um, the viewport only. So if I highlight it, over here, AutoCAD will show me which layer that is on, and I can go to the column Viewport Freeze, and if I pick on that, all of the text on that layer disappears. So I'm going to pick this other set of text, and it's going to show me that it's on the A Dimensions layer, and I'm going to freeze that next. And then this text is on A Anno Dimensions, and we want these symbols to be turned off, well, oh, one of them's on the A floor pad, it looks like. We'll freeze that. And then this one is I symbols. We'll freeze that. And we need the lighting and electrical. We'll freeze that. And we're just going to um, keep freezing things that are only in this layer. And this will also sort of show you whether you have things on the correct layer or not. And you can always, at this time, switch things to the proper or appropriate layer that they should be on. Next thing that we need to do is for some of these dash two objects that are above the cutting plane, we need to turn those off. We're not going to render those into a presentation drawing. So if I highlight that it's on the message board layer and I'm just going to freeze that and then I have an article of furniture this object I'm going to change the line type from hidden to to continuous but I'm only doing that in the viewport line type I'm not doing that over here in the drawing viewport okay so We've gotten everything we can get. I can't get these hidden layers in the in the desk because they're part of a block, but that's something we can do on the back end in Adobe Illustrator with the white direct selection tool later on. Okay. Now that we've gotten all of our layers turned off or the line weights changed in the viewport area of the layer property manager, we just want to double click excuse me, we just want to double check that our, our viewport is scaled correctly and then deactivate the viewport. And we're going to do that in each of our um, elevation sheets as well. So from here, we're going to make a PDF file. So I'm going to go to DWG or DWG to PDF, or I can do AutoCAD PDF high quality print. Um, any of either of these are good, or if you have one that says Adobe to uh, DWG to Adobe, that's also fine. So there's lots of different options yours may may show. So I'm going to print this one. Right now it's on a B size 11 by 17 sheet. That's fine. This is a virtual sheet. We're not printing this, so it doesn't really matter as long as everything fits on the sheet. What to print? Layout is fine. 
the scale should say one to one because we've scaled the viewport. So anything we're seeing should be printed one to one here. And then monochrome is the pen that we want. All right, um, let's preview this first as a PDF. Make sure that everything is looks the way we think it should look. Good. Everything we suppressed in the layer property manager just under the viewports looks good in this in this drawing that we have here. So I'm going to close that. Go back here and save this as a PDF. And I'm just going to put this um, on my desktop. So it's easy for me to find. OK, once you've made a PDF of your presentation floor plan and each of your presentation elevations, we're going to move from AutoCAD into Adobe Illustrator. For the next couple of steps, you will be using the white direct selection arrow to window around the objects in the drawing that you want to transfer. And we're going to go inside here and just select the drawing. Command G groups it. You could also go to object, pull down menu group. And we want to rotate this 90 degrees. Let's preview it and make sure that's the right. Yep, that looks good. Control, Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC. Create a new file that's an Adobe Illustrator file. So this one is going to be Tabor Floor Plan Presentation. And we're going to Command V, paste it in, deselect and then save this file save as nothing is saved on the on the artboard until we actually hit the save button okay so then from here we want to select our our objects and if you haven't grouped it you're going to have to do a window around it and then you want to go to object live paint make now you're ready to render this drawing. Now you're going to need your swatch libraries. And here they are. And um, we're going to use a whole set of rendering tools. Let's go over here. We need to change this drawing environment. Mine says automation. It should say Essentials Classic. This gets a lot of people in trouble here. So let's switch that to Essentials Classic. And then I have my full set of tools. You can see my toolbar just exponentially grew. Um, so all I have open right now are swatches and my main toolbar and the options panel. And just as a refresher, if you go to the window pull down menu, you should have control checked. You should have um, I don't think it's necessary to have art boards, but you will need layers and you will need swatches for now. Okay, so um, the tools that you're going to use to render with once you've made it a live render object are these Shape Builder, Live Paint Bucket, and Live Paint Selection Tool. So you want to just tear that off by holding down your mouse button and moving over to this little um, narrow band at the end of the tool set. You're going to need this whole thing deployed up on your screen. Now, how I found that is I have my tools in two different columns by picking the, this arrow up here. On the left column is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the family of tools you need. Pick and hold your mouse button down until you see this family of tools fly out. 
Once you see the family of tools fly out, hold your mouse button down, can, you don't let up on it, and then go all the way to this column and then let up. And then you'll have Shape Builder, Live um, Paint Bucket, and Live Paint Selection Tool. So um, anything that you don't want in your drawing, you're going to use your white arrow for, and you're just going to make a little crossing box and hit, hit the delete button twice. Crossing box, delete, delete. Now we have our desk um, up here. And if you want it to look all like one piece in the presentation drawing, you can even get rid of this line. Okay. Um, so I think this looks good. I would probably make these line weights a little heavier in this drawing. So if I did that, whoops, hold down the shift key if you want to pick more than one at a time. I'm using this white arrow again. And then I can go to a window called the window pull down menu and pick stroke. And that will allow me to pick a heavier line weight. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, we're ready to start rendering. Um, and I'm going to use this live paint selection tool and I'm going to um, pick an area to render. And right now it's rendering over the little keyboard that we have and, and part of the, um, the, the monitor. So one thing we can do to change that is pick on the drawing, go to live paint gap options and we're going to reset the gap detection from small gaps to medium and see if that helps. That's only if it's not picking up everything. Ah, and that worked perfect. See, now that will render around our computer and I can pick a nice brown color if I want to simulate wood. However, um, you could also look in your swatch library menu, which is down here from the swatch panel. And remember, if you don't have this up, go to window, pull down menu, swatches. In the lower left hand corner is a swatch library. There are a variety of patterns that can be found here under the swatch library in this area. However, there are really no good wood patterns. Let's go to the internet and download a wood finish, or perhaps you have one already in your digital material library. And we, and we will use the place command under the file pull down menu to insert the wood image into the drawing to be used as a swatch. So that will be the next part of the demonstration. Once you have downloaded a wood finish from the internet or located one in your material library, you'll want to go to the file pull down menu about midway down and find the place command. This is something similar to the insert command in other software programs. So to be able to insert an outside file into this drawing, we need to use the place command. And then you want to browse to find your wood material. Select it by highlighting it and then pick the place button. Now don't just pick anywhere on the screen with your mouse like this. The file comes in much, much too large. Instead, go to the file pull down menu, place, select your icon, pick the place button, pick with your mouse, hold the mouse button down and drag it out until you have a sample that's about as big as the area you, you will be covering. I want to pause here to remind you, especially if you're new to Adobe Illustrator, that you should always use your black arrow 
The black arrow selects objects by picking on an object. You can deselect an object with the black arrow by picking off of a selected area into a empty area or clear area. You can move an object by picking on the object with your black arrow and dragging it. So please remember to use the black arrow to resize, move, um, or deselect an area. So we want to make sure that this object is about as big as the desk will be covering. When you see this X inside the sample, that indicates that the file is not yet fully inserted into the drawing. So while the object is still selected and shown with the X, you want to go to your options panel and pick the Embed option. Once it is embedded in the object, you may drag it to the Swatch Library, holding the mouse button the whole time until you're in an open area under the Swatch panel, and then let go with your mouse button. You should see it appear as a swatch. Once you see it appear as a swatch, you can eliminate or delete by hitting the Delete key of the selected image on the screen. We no longer need that. Now, if I highlight the swatch, I can use the live paint bucket to then put the material on the desktop. Let's review that process once again. We'll be rendering the rug and the sofa here and we will be creating new swatches and looking through the swatch library. So the first thing I'm going to do is look through the swatch library and see if there's anything appropriate for this rug. So I'm going to the lower left hand corner icon of the swatch library. Remember, I went to the window pull down menu swatches to get this panel. In the lower left hand corner, if you hover over that icon, it's the Swatch Library menu. You'll see this mini menu fly out, and then there's a section called Patterns, Decorative, and Vonster. So these are some patterns that I have previewed in advance and I think might work. So if I were to look at Vortex, make these thumbnails a little bit, mm, I guess that's the biggest I can make. I can look at Vortex, and if I want to pre-select the area, I'm going to use the Live Paint Selection tool. And I'm going to show you why this is a beneficial tool. I'm going to pick this area, hold my Shift key down, and pick the second area as well. Now while it's selected, I can preview all different types of patterns. You can't do that if you're just dumping in paint. You can only look at one area at a time. So let's say that I'm going to use that for my rug for now, unless I find something that I like better. Every time I want to deselect an object, I just type V on my keyboard and pick off in an open area. And that helps me deselect a pre-selected area. Next, I'm going to, still on my black arrow, I'm going to use the place command to place some of these floral fabrics that I have on my desktop. So I will go to the file pull down menu, midway down to the place command. Then from my desktop, I will pick one of these fabrics that I like for my sofa. And I'm going to size this to about the size of my sofa. I want to make sure that it's at least as big as the area that I need to cover. And once I'm satisfied with the scale of this fabric and the size of this fabric, I go to the Embed button on my control panel. 
has to be embedded before you can drag it into the swatch pattern and make it into a usable swatch. I'll move that over there for now, and I did that with my black arrow. Now, with my Live Paint Selection tool, I will hover over my sofa cushions, hold the Shift key down to add to a section, and then I'll pick my new swatch. Black arrow, deselect. Okay, that looks fantastic. I may want to change the scale a little bit of this fabric for the arms and the cushions. So I'm going to just do something like this um, for the back of the cushions. See, it looks a little distorted. I'll drag that in and drop it. Use my pre, my live paint selection. Hold the shift key down. There. Now another thing that I might want to do is rotate this. I'll use my black arrow, hold my shift key down, and from the corner when I see this curved arrowhead, I've changed the orientation of this fabric. So now I'm going to drag this new orientation into the swatches box and let go with my finger. Use the live selection tool to pre-select the arms of the sofa, and then I've picked. And then the last thing is the front of these cushions and also the back of this. So I think what I will do is rotate one more time, select with my black arrow, hold the shift key down till I see the curved arrows, drag it, and I'm going to change the orientation and I'm going to make it look even more um, skewed and then I'm going to drag that into my box and drop it and then I will use um, my selection area to get these now I can get rid of my original fabric by going back to the black arrow picking on it and hitting delete. Now, if I want some um, variation and if this doesn't look like there's enough variation, I can add a new fabric. Embed it, change the scale, drag it to the box, use the pre-selector and then pick the new fabric. I can also reshape this if I want to use it on the pillows. However, I think that's, that's enough for that fabric. I might want to use some solid colored fabric, so I'll pick here, and I'll eye drop. I'll just pick a color here that I think coordinates. Um, and I could change by double picking on it the color a little bit. And we'll do every other one that color. I dropped that color. There we go. I for I dropped that color. That's what I was trying to do. And now maybe I want a floral here and here. I'm going to go back to the place command and I'm going to pick this reddish floral. We just want it the size of a pillow, embed it, drag it to the swatch, let go, get rid of this one, pre-select here, hold the shift key down and pick that. I'm get up a little closer. I drop this, but we'll make it a little bit lighter because the light might be hitting it. And then go back to the black arrow and deselect. Now if we wanted to then do the rest of the wood, we 
You could render the plant if you wanted, not if you wanted. Um, here's another piece of wood that we might need to, oh, better get in closer. Don't get on the edge of an object, pick in an open area. And then black arrow to deselect. Command zero will um, zoom back out the extents of what you're seeing. And I'm not sure what Ashley actually wants to use in terms of the countertop material here, but I could re-pull out one of my old wood fabrics, go to the black arrow, hold my shift key down, and when I see the double curved arrow, rotate it up. Drag it back in. I have a vertical sample now. Delete the original. Um, highlight this. Then use my paint bucket. Go back to the black arrow. Deselect. And I'm done. Now I am able to demonstrate what the color story is as best as I can from the plan view. And where you're going to be able to affect a little bit more communication about the finishes of your design is when you get to the elevations and you're able to show the paint on the walls. You may not um, wish to, if you have a really complicated pattern like this, actually, you know, um, render every single tile. What you may want to do is put a put one little sample of the tile in here, and that's it. But to finish up this this view. If we're done with this view, we're going to save one last time as an AI file. When that's done, we're going to go back to the file, pull down menu, export as a JPEG, and pick the export button. And we're done. Hey, thank you for attending the live online class today. Be well.